Hey guys, Micah from Black Bear Custom Kydex. I've got a really cool sheet to show you. This thing is an absolute monster. Um, and this one is going to Ron down in Pennsylvania. And Ron has sent me um, five or six different projects now. So I'm pretty excited to uh, to have a repeat customer that come back that many times. And uh, hopefully I haven't failed his expectations with this one. So this guy is a sheath system for, uh, we've got a K-Bar Kukri, and this is the K-Bar uh, BK21, and an SE4. And both of these have custom handle scales from the knife connection. I especially like this one with the orange liners. This thing is just beautiful. And uh, yeah, that extra little length there on that handle scale just, man, this thing just fits my hand perfectly. I love this knife. So anyway, um, he asked me to build this sheath using black multicam or super cam night stalker as knife kits calls it. And uh, for the attachments, we've got hex cam specter, which is my favorite hex cam. Um, just beautiful gray, black, orange, and uh, on a really light gray base. So anyway, all the things that he asked for on it, we have <clears throat> an Exotac fire rod. And that guy's actually attached directly to the SE4 sheath. You can see it's kind of hanging off here. We have an Exotac Titan lighter. And if you guys haven't checked this thing out, it's pretty cool. This is a waterproof lighter. You can see down here you've got your fuel tank and uh, some cotton balls and all that. And on the top side, you have your striker. I won't spark it. I don't want to use up any of the flint for this brand new thing. But um, yeah, it's a pretty cool system. Really compact, as always, watertight and machined with absolutely beautiful precision on it. Exotac makes the best stuff on the market, guys. So go check them out. Um, all right, so we got the Titan layer there. And oh, make sure I put that on the right way. Uh, this water tight capsule from One Tigress. I'm not sure what this was actually specifically marketed or designed for, but obviously anything that fits in it, you'll be able to store in here and keep it uh, keep it nice and dry. So it looks to me like it probably was like one of those. It's probably like a poncho or like a mylar blanket capsule or something like that. But if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Uh, obviously this is nice and big, so you can stuff. A lot of your tinder or cotton balls you know things like that into here or matches you know so this is a really handy thing to have so we got that stowed down here on its own holder an se pouch here an se tin on the back and a little bit stamped in there and we got some molly locks some large molly locks uh, these are gen 3 in case you're wondering and uh, that's the carry system so Let's talk this thing down. Um, obviously, it's a little bit wacky looking. You probably haven't seen too many quite like this. Um, it's very heavy, but it is going to be mounted onto a pack. I'm not sure what I would estimate the weight. I'd say I'd say this probably clocks in around five to six pounds. So it's not insanely heavy, but you know, for a sheath system, this thing is a it's pretty big. And bear in mind, none of the capsules are you know, the pouch, the tin, and this Tiger Swan are all empty right now. So this thing can definitely stand to uh, pack on a little bit more weight before it, uh, it should be weighed. So, okay, what do we have? We have <clears throat> an awkward position. It looks a little bit awkward for this SE4. But the reason I put it here was because if I didn't want to make the sheath kind of unnecessarily large at the end of it, then, uh, which I didn't. I wanted to keep it where it was, and this was the farthest down I could put the SE pouch without it starting to like really hang off the sides. You can't really see it if you're looking at just the back, which is how I prefer it. I just think it looks kind of clumsy to have it sticking out all over the sides. And it also benefits to not have it sticking out over the sides, uh, not only in terms of like the overall profile, but because it makes it a little bit easier to um, to work this mounting plate and get it to just um, 
work with the overall sheath better. That's, at least for me, that's what I found uh, working on these SE pouches. So I've got that pouch riding on an adapter plate made of 1 8 inch thick Kydex and it's riveted to the sheath, well actually it's screwed onto the sheath through just two points of contact. So it does have a little bit of flex here, but with as rugged as that plate is, I don't anticipate any problems there. Um, the SE4 is actually sharing one drill hole with it. So if we scoot this out of the way, you can see that they're overlapped there just a little bit. And I've used, angled it up slightly here. You can see that tapered angle and uh, just kind of graduated the size of the spacers. And there's three points of contact for this sheet. So this sheet's not, not gonna twist or rattle or anything like that on you either. It's on there really solid. Um, the reason I chose to go with the Exotac gear mounted to the SE4. I think my Google Home just took me. <laughs> anyway, the reason I mounted the um, Exotac gear directly to the SE4 is because I wanted the uh, I wanted the availability to mess around a little bit with the spacing that I had here on these Molly locks. Uh, you know how I was going to attach these and you know what I was going to do with all the rest of the attachments. With all these attachments on here it was just kind of a, a puzzle to figure out how am I going to get them all to stay on there without making it look just absolutely crazy. Yeah you could kind of put things next to each other you can make a double holder for certain things but it's just number one it's not as strong. Number two if you have a holder for multiple items it tends to be kind of a um, just kind of sloppy because when you pull one item out it affects the retention on the other items so that's why you know typically when you see anything I'm doing that has like a combo sheath for these two you know two given items usually they each get their own piece of kydex and I find some way of riveting them together or something like that because I want them to each have uh, perfect individual retention rather than being dependent on one another or affected by one another so um, that's a tough thing to do sometimes, but in any event, that's kind of where I'm at with uh, the spacing that I did on here and the mounting options here. This obviously the longest stretch of flat uh, or the longest straight edge that I could put this thing on was the obvious choice. And <clears throat> then of course we have the SE10 on the back. Now he had actually asked me if I could do this the same way I did for... Um, the El Chete sheath I did for BJ Hill. You guys can see that video. That thing is just a friggin' tank of a sheath. Uh, and I did a really unique holder for the SC10 on there where you kind of slide it in this way and clicks in and everything. Uh, but the space that I had to work with on here after attaching other things just wouldn't allow for it. And if I were to get rid of those things and then attach that, you know, maybe I could have made it work. Um, but then that kind of orphans the other things. So um, I saw it as just the best option to kind of change the direction of it and just go with more of a traditional holder for it because, you know, number one, it's a little more rugged. Number two, it fits a lot better. And number three, um, the, the primary reason why I didn't want to go with the El Chete style SE, SE tin holder <laughs> that's a mouthful, is because there are screws coming up through that part of the sheath directly under this tin. Um, and with that other style holder, it actually would put the tin directly against the, the kukri sheath, and it's just one layer that covers it for the holder and pins it down, whereas this one you can see has a layer under and over. This is one piece tacoed all the way around. So... Uh, the reason, obviously, is that the Kydex is protecting the tin from the screw. So you would you would wind up with scratches all along the back of your tin, maybe even kind of starting to dig into the metal, potentially accelerating any kind of rust or wear on that. And, you know, that just isn't ideal at all. So I decided to kind of mitigate that by just using this kind of holder, which, you know, for basically every reason just worked out better with this particular sheet. So Ron, I appreciate you giving me a little leeway on that, buddy. Um, I think you'll be happier with this than you would with the other style. So, all right, now we got these Molly locks. So the Mollies, I put on a plate. Um, the sheath ended up being 
just just a little bit too narrow to do my normal kind of plate where I wrap the top around and grip the face of the sheet um, and have the mollies both connected to that plate. Uh, it was just a little bit too narrow to be able to do that <clears throat> and it's too wide for one and a half inch spacing in my opinion. Uh, you know, it just look kind of weird. It's basically a three and a quarter inch wide sheath. So uh, if you guys aren't familiar already with molly locks, they or molly in general, molly webbing from one loop to the other, center to center, is one and a half inch increments. So you got to put the molly locks in either an inch and a half, three inches, four and a half, six inches, etc. Uh, I explain this a lot in, in the videos I do when I put mollies on things because I see a lot of guys out there making sheaths and you know they've been asked to use mollies and they just put them willy-nilly whatever spacing and that doesn't benefit the customer at all unless the customer doesn't actually intend to use it on molly webbing so um, I'm not not trying to give anybody else a hard time or tell them their work isn't good or anything like that but this is a detail that's really important if you know if they're asking for something to mount on molly webbing you really need to nail that spacing so that they can use their sheet the way that they're asking you to build it. Um, as for this thing in the center, um, one thing I was having an issue with was um, I used again the eighth inch thick piece of Kydex to create that plate and that's fine but because this is a taco style sheath you don't have mounting holes on both sides and therefore the plate had a little bit of flex to it. Normally I would say you're good to go that's not a problem but with as heavy as this thing is, it just, I didn't want to take any chances. It seemed like it could uh, really get out of control and maybe flex to the point of bending it or, you know, worse, creasing it or breaking it. So what I did was I just took a piece of nylon strapping, brought it around, and I riveted a piece of Kydex above and below it. And I also took another couple pieces of Kydex. You can probably see them in there. I just took a couple pieces of Kydex and wedged them underneath this so that it creates a good amount of pressure upward you know keeping this uh, strap nice and taut against the sheath um, to prevent any any kind of additional flexing so Ron if you can give this sucker a try out you you can kind of flex the corners just a little bit but that center is nice and sturdy and that thing is going to hold up for you uh, for a long long time so I'm really happy with how that came out as far as this tin here goes. You can see I've done a thumb cut out here and it's just to help you leverage your tin a little bit further out so you can get a good grip on it and pull it out rather than you know if, if it were a flush edge like the bottom trying to push it up all the way or push it down all the way uh, would be a pain. I did make this a one-way draw so your tin is only going to come out the bottom and the reason is because you're otherwise going to be interfering with your molly locks. One thing that you should know obviously if your molly panel's here and your tin is here sticking out further than this point of contact, you might have a little bit of an issue. Um, so what you're probably going to want to do is just go through two rows of the molly webbing. I gave you some Gen 3 large molly locks so you could go through three. Uh, and if you can do it, more power to you, but I don't know if your bag will have that much flex on it or anything. Um, that's just one of the prices you pay when you get this much stuff on a sheath. There's just no other place to put it. And if I originally, he'd actually asked me to do the pouch on the back, but when you stuff that pouch full, it's going to be significantly wider than the tin. So I decided the tin on the back was the way to go. Um, all right, I think I've covered just about all that stuff. And all right, so I guess we're down to the draw. So check out the knives real quick. I'm gonna stand up. because. <clears throat> just more comfortable. All right, so this thing has an absolutely beautiful draw on it. It is so smooth and uh, and crisp. Got a nice click going back in. It almost <laughs> it's kind of crazy, but if you're holding this sheath system, it's almost a ballistic draw for this SE4. Uh, so it's kind of crazy, but I mean, certainly going to be an easy one-handed draw for you. And then we got the kukri here. Now this sucker, believe it or not, you also get a nice one-handed draw. So 
Uh, like I was saying at the beginning of the video, you know, a lot of guys do those kind of, you know, those designs with the split. Actually, this is my second take of the video. The first one, my phone rang, so I lost the video. But um, I can't remember if I said it in this take or not. I'll say it again. So most of the knives, or most of the sheaths you see out there for kukris, uh, for knives like El Chete or anything with a big sweeping edge, parangs, most machetes, you see a split that goes up the top of the spine so that instead of, you know, drawing out of the tube like that, you actually kind of click it upward, clear that split, and then you can draw your knife out like this. So it's really kind of free moving up here until you click it down into more of that kind of traditional shape for retention on your knife. That's great. More power to you guys. Um, I'm not saying that that's a bad design at all. That is, that's not what I'm saying here. So please don't misread this. I'm just saying that I personally prefer a taco style sheath because it is absolutely stronger. There's no flex along the uh, length of your, of your sheath. And it just allows, in my opinion, it just allows you to do a lot more with it uh, without having to worry about that compression against your blade, uh, you know, scratching or whatever. So this is just a better design um, for my purposes. So don't take that as me saying that that's the best design out there or anything like that. This is just, in my opinion, for my purposes and what I like to do, this is a stronger build and a better design. So anyway, it does require that you do a lot more work um, to make sure that you do get proper clearance when you're uh, it, when you're drawing and resheathing your your blade here. So obviously you can see the blade is narrower on the face near the handle than it is out here in this big fat belly down there. So you know there are different options as far as how you can get the kydex to spread back apart here or you can block it out before you mold the kydex around it and then you'd have the you know so I'm not going to tell you exactly what I do but um, but you can see it does go in nice and smooth got a good click there's no rattle no play um, there's a little rattle this buckle here is rattling a little bit but the knives themselves are in there super solid uh, and I'm really happy with that smooth draw on both of them so in any event, that's what I got for you guys. Sorry for rambling. We're at 17 and a half minutes already, so I'm just going to cut this short. And uh, I really appreciate you guys sticking around for this whole thing and listen to me uh, jaw jack here. So, all right, guys, if you like this sheath, if you like this video, hit that like button. If you like my channel, I ask you to subscribe to it. Go down below and hit that comment section up. Let me know what you think of this thing and uh, share it with all your buddies. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Stick around for the next one. God bless.